So we just hit 50k on Instagram. I am spe I am speechless. Like, how are all you guys here? I'm just some guy. <laughs> I swear I say this like every time I hit a milestone, but I'm so thankful for the support. This is insane. So usually when I hit a milestone, I do some kind of art challenge for you guys, and this is one of them. I decided I'd record this one and kind of take you through the process of my art, except I'm kind of stupid and I forgot to hit record when I was sketching, so... <laughs> oh man. But I can still take you through, like, the colouring and rendering process, you know. Hopefully you learn something, or just enjoy my lovely voice. I can maybe do, like, some sketching tutorials, sketching process videos if you enjoy this. But anyway, for now I'm just fast forwarding to the colouring stage so we can get started on this. What I'm doing with my sketch right now is kind of refining some harder edges and stuff like that because I don't really like to do solid line work. I like to keep the energy of the sketch. This works pretty well for me as I have like kind of a painterly style. So a lot of my cleanup happens in the render. You'll also notice me blocking out some of the harder shadows which will make sense a little later. Alright, so now the sketch is finished, I'm moving on to colour, and you'll notice the first thing I did was lay down like a base colour for the background, and this just makes it a lot nicer to work on than just white. I find that it helps me find colours that work well together as well. So now I'm kind of just going in with a lasso fill brush blocking out the silhouette with a base skin tone. At this stage I'm not even worried about if it's super neat or not, because there's plenty of time to clean up afterwards. Right now I'm just giving myself a base to work off of. So now my silhouettes all blocked out, I can start messing around with the colours. So the first thing I do is I grab the sketch and then I set it to multiply and start messing around with the colour of that. For this I'm just using the basic hue saturation value sliders to just mess around and see what I like. I find that for this a colour that's already quite similar to the skin tone works pretty well. So for the rest of the colours moving forward I want to find something that works well with the colours that are already laid down. So at this stage I like to add some more colours to the skin and kind of give it a little more life. A good way of giving life to the skin is adding some colour around the cheeks and nose. So as you can see that's what I'm doing right now, just kind of experimenting with the shapes. I'll also add the same colour around the eyelids to give it a little more depth. My goal here isn't to be super refined with it, it's kind of just to get the right feeling. You really don't have to be super refined with your brush strokes, just have fun with it. So I've just fast forwarded a little bit now and you can see everything's a little more blended out. Now I'm just using the same colour to add shadow which will give it a lot more depth. For this I'm using a hard round brush but being really gentle with the opacity to keep it looking smooth. And that's the thing, you really don't need fancy brushes to create a pleasing piece, it's all about how you use them. In my case I'm almost always using really simple brushes like the hard round. Sometimes textured brushes for sketching and stuff like that, but you really don't need them. So with the base shading down, I'm kind of messing around with more saturated colours around the cheeks now. In this case, I'm using quite a bright orange, but brushing it down, being really gentle with the opacity again. There's not too much more to say about this stage, so I'll just fast forward this bit. It's mainly just trial and error until you find something you like. So now I want to start moving on to the actual colour scheme. Right now I'm using the selection tool to select all the hair. This will make sure that when I'm colouring it I won't accidentally go over the skin. Some people might like to do this on a different layer. Uh, it's really about what works for you. Personally doing everything on one layer just feels more natural to me and is much more efficient for my process. But you might be different so experiment. Now I'm going in with the basic round brush and just brushing in the hair colour. Again being really gentle with the opacity. This will make sure that none of the colours are overwhelming. I'm also just blocking out the basic shadows. Now onto my boy Leg Cat. If you follow the Instagram, you know what's up. <laughs> he is my glorious son. So now I'm just going over the same process with the colouring, selecting the shape and then going in with a basic round brush. And the same thing for the hoodie now.
Now this one's a tricky one because the hoodie's also the same kind of blue on this character, but I don't just want to use the same blue because I want to give it some contrast. So right now I'm just experimenting a lot with the colours to find something similar that also has contrast from the colours that are already put down. I ended up going for this slightly darker teal colour which I quite liked. The rest of the colouring process was quite simple, I won't bore you with the detail, it was just a lot of experimenting. So yeah, we'll just fast forward this bit. So now I'm happy with the colours, I just merge both of the layers into one so I can work on it as a whole. Now I start the render, which is basically just cleaning up and making everything a little more refined. Having everything on one layer for me makes things really efficient because I don't have to keep switching. And there's no separation so everything just kind of blends into each other better. <laughs> I can't talk, I'm sorry. What I'm focusing on right now is just cleaning up the sketchy lines and making the edges a lot more crisp. This is going to be like one of my favourite parts of the art process because you see everything just come together, it's beautiful. <laughs> again, there's really not too much to say about this stage, so I'll just cut to the time lapse again and you can kind of see what I'm doing through the process. Oh man, I love adding the highlights. It just... Mm, it's so satisfying. <laughs> so now we're kind of approaching the end of the piece and I just like to go in with some textures. Especially with the skin, I like to add a little texture to make it a little less smooth. So right now I'm kind of just going in with like a, a random spray brush, which has little details in the skin, which I quite like. You could also use this brush a little darker to add freckles and stuff like that. I think it's just a pretty neat brush. I'm also going in with like a noise brush here, just really adding more texture to it. Again, it's really just about experimenting and finding something that you like. And of course, this is an art challenge for my Instagram, so if you want to head over there and check it out, I'll leave a link in the description and it'll have all the info there. Yes. But seriously, 50k, oh my god. <laughs> that is nuts. How did I get here? That is wild. I thank you so much. Seriously, this means so much. So basically, this is like a design challenge where you're going to get leg cut over there and kind of turn it into your own human version. It can be whatever you want. I think I'll probably draw my favorites as well in my own style. So if that's something that interests you, go check out the Instagram. Become part of the family. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just have fun with it, you know, and I'll hopefully see your lovely art soon. 
Mwah.